making this video because I've been getting a lot of questions lately and a lot of folks think that there are no differences between these two machines. You got the 2020 and the 19s are, I do believe the same bikes. I don't know that they made a lot of differences other than ditching a brake lever and such, but uh, so we got the 2020 and we got the 18. There are some big differences in my opinion. So first and foremost, I think the biggest difference is they've gone to a straight cut gears and the rear dip of the new units from 19 to 20. So, and so far I haven't heard of one rear dip blowing out. So props to you Can-Am for uh, making the change because it seems like it was for the better. That's a big difference to me boys because, you know, we blew our first diff out of this machine here. We got the mud and wheels in there now, but we blew it out 500 kilometers. So that's rather expensive for a lot of people for their first repair. So that's a huge difference in itself. Now, what else they did is, well, I'm back here my friend and uh, we'll take a look at the rear suspension now the whole suspension has been redesigned on the 2019 and 20 we got arched a arms and uh, they've widened the bike to 50 inches or 50 50 I think and uh, I'll tell you right now it handles completely different completely different we switched the Fox suspension on that machine to Elka's because it was a bit too rigid it was a bit too rough um, you couldn't keep the bike from bottoming out unless you were in the hard, hardest setting. And uh, once we switched to the Elkas, went with the true dual rate spring setup, it seemed to give you the best of both. Now, we do have to adjust the suspension on that because as you can see, we just added some 34s back onto the Beast. Um, and an STM secondary, I might add, which is awesome. So we're gonna get to testing that out here soon. But yeah, on the back of this bike, we've got now a true dual spring setup. and. It has made a world of difference, an absolute world of difference, boys. This thing, actually, I don't see a need to replace the suspension. I took it around the track and it actually held up great. So, so we got new suspension. We've got forward arch A-arms in the front, giving you better ground clearance, which is awesome. Um, some other changes that have been made that uh, really shouldn't be taken lightly are the electronic throttle control. So ditch the throttle cable. She's touchy, boys, and it also comes with three modes of electronic throttle control, being uh, sport mode, which is super touchy, um, normal, which I experimented with on my last ride, and it really takes a lot of lurching out of the machine. So, And you can switch these on the fly just by reaching your thumb up and clicking the button, and bang, off you go. You got all the control you need. So there's an eco mode slash work on some machines, I do believe. Same damn thing, though. Um, and it really just dummies down the throttle response to probably i'd say 50 percent you know um and then i would think about 75 percent with the normal mode and then of course sport mode is giving you 100 percent throttle control so it's very very responsive so that's huge in itself they did ditch a brake handle which i'm not a huge fan of but at the same token i guess i can kind of see why they did it it's a little bit redundant you're getting brake through your axle through your driveline system so not a big deal for comfort and for you know I kind of miss it, but I can live with it. I've gotten used to it already, actually. Um, small things that I noticed were different on the exhaust side when I did the installation for the exhaust. With the deletion of the throttle cable and stuff, it actually offered more room to get in there and deal with the exhaust shield. Used to be a bolt up in there. Some of you guys don't know what I'm talking about. You fed through the top. You really just have no way to get in there. Now you can actually get your hands in there. And I'm expecting that that... Uh, that front cylinder spark plug might be easier to access as well, which is kind of just a positive. Um, not something I'm sure they did on purpose. It just kind of worked out that way with the deletion of the throttle control. So, or the cable rather. But, uh, well, the stance of the bike, and like I said, all the suspension. Oh yeah. They also added in, right in here, boys, come take a closer look. But we got ourselves a sway bar in the front with some links, and we might experiment with removing that. I don't know. But uh, so far, what it's allowed the bike to do is corner really hard, really aggressive, makes the Renegade feel even more sporty. Now there's an upside and a downside to that. What I'm finding is the bike, in some scenarios, pushes out a little further in the corners because the front is staying level and your tire's not diving and digging. Which, so sometimes I think pivoting on a dime was actually easier with this machine, but you had a fine line of when the tire would scooch on you without that sway bar in there and uh, which just increases your chance of rolling the bike. This one, pretty tough to roll, I have a feeling. Um, of course, it's softer, whatever, of course, but hard pack, it really pushes that front out, really stays level, and it gives you a whole new level of confidence when you're pushing it to the limits, is what I find. Um, 
So those are the major changes. Of course, we got more horsepower. Who's going to complain about that, right? So loving that. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much the major changes that they made. I mean, the differences between this bike and that bike are like night and day. We've got a lot of add-ons on this one. Um, as you guys have seen as you followed along over the years here. But um, yeah, I'm sure I'm forgetting a few more things because there really are a couple more changes. Basic though, for the, for the most part, um, I have noticed already that with the 18s and the 17s, I think even the 16s, almost every bike I've ever seen, all the boys riding, all the XMRs, all the Outlanders, there was a bit of an issue with the ceramic seal. Now, it wasn't much of an issue. Unless you're getting coolant into your engine side, it's not really an issue. But these ceramic seals at the water pump housing tend to weep a little into this vent line here at the front. And I'm sure, yeah, we do. We got some coolant in here. She's a little dirty from the mud that's in dust that's collected in the line and funneling down. But we got a little fluid there. And after every ride, and I usually empty it out, there's about an inch of coolant in there. But so far, I'm not sure if they made a change or uh, just tightened it up or what, but we haven't got a we haven't got a drop in the new one, so I don't know. Maybe they improved there as well, but I haven't seen that as an issue. So that's kind of cool. wasn't really a major issue, but it did bother a lot of guys. Some guys went in and had their seals changed, and uh, I never bothered because it wasn't really an issue. I just keep an eye on it, and if you don't see any oil in there, and you'll tell, it'll separate from your coolant. Um, then it's really nothing to worry about. So. I'm digging the 2020. I'm having, um, I'm still torn on the electronic throttle control. I think once we flash this bike, I'm going to like it a lot more. It's just, it's so responsive that it's, I don't know, it's hard to explain. So, but again, you just reach up, click that button, throw it in normal mode and you're trailing, you're going to lose all that lurch and all that responsiveness. So it's kind of one of those things, but it does make this bike feel a lot uh, heavier under the thumb for sure. So. I didn't notice my thumb getting tired before, but I'm right now when I jump back on her, man. This thing just is so, there's just very little resistance. If anything, I think Can-Am could probably stiffen up the spring or whatever they got in here and make her a little stiffer. But um, yeah, come take a look at this uh, throttle control here, boys. You'll see. They've got this whole unit on here and it's got the ITC mode. Um, I'm not sure what ITC stands for, boys. Uh, throttle control, obviously. Um, so yeah, you just click it over to the right for sport, click it over to the left, which would be your center setting for normal, one more time to the left, and you got your eco mode. So that is that. Um, this I thought was kind of cool, actually, guys. The old, they changed the pad this year, and uh, the other ones are foam cutouts and such. So when I put the rocks riser on that one, yeah, it fits all right. It's a little loose, it's quite, but this one actually just fits lovely right over top of your rocks. Just goes right back on there, and it's like, like it was never even altered boys just looks mint so loving the 2020 so far it's uh super responsive um we got to still do some work we're waiting on a qsc to arrive uh we're gonna throw that in the primary i'll probably take the dalton spring on the secondary that was in the 18 renegade and drop it in this when we throw the primary on there just to make her perform a little better uh some of you probably already noticed that we've thrown the xm310s on it which is going to make this thing a hell of a lot more fun to drive for sure. Um, cryptids are a good tire, good at all round. I'd say they're great at just about nothing though. Um, just good all round tire. They'll get you through there. Um, but I find these tires, the XM310s, they hook. If you're looking for a tire to hook up and get the front up, they're your go to for sure. Moto Havocs, they've been great, tried and true. I really can't believe how much scad they throw in the air, boys. It's intense. Um, I'd say they probably don't drive forward as hard as the Assassinators. They definitely make it look a little more exciting because they throw a lot more. Great tire. And I wasn't sure about going with another Moto Havoc, but when I was in Quebec, I jumped on a lad's machine real quick to run back to the truck uh, while I was servicing the other bike there, washing it up for the uh, drag races. And by the time I got back on his bike, he had Moto Havocs on it. I decided we're going with another set of Moto Havocs. They just ride so damn good on the hard pack, on the trailing and stuff like that. So back to the Moto Havocs. We called up uh, Trevor at DirtyLife.ca and we ordered them up right away. I couldn't go back down in size, guys. We got ourselves another set of MSL, MSA wheels. Uh, these are the Bandits and uh, I like them. I dig it. 
Um, some of the young lads worked. They thought they were a little more fresh than the five spoke, uh, the old school from my generation. But uh, these look pretty cool, pretty flashy. I'm impressed. Um, look forward to repping her, boys. Just look forward to repping her. Um, I don't know if there's really any other changes that I can think of off the top of my head. I think we covered the electronic throttle control. We got a whole new design suspension, but that's huge. That's not a small change. It's monstrous. And when it comes to riding this one to that one, they feel like different bikes. Between that and throttle control, man, those are huge changes. And then K&M's obviously uh, started to pay attention and has buttoned up, like I said, with the straight cut gears and the rear diff. Um, making the bike more reliable. So again, if you're if you're questioning and hesitating jumping on a 19 or a 20, I wouldn't. I think they're uh, they're pretty crazy in the performance factor. I was contemplating trading this bike in on a 2020 before Bay had basically said, "Listen, we're thinking of grabbing you a couple demos. What do you think of that?" Yeah, buddy. Okay, so we're keeping the Renegade. We get to build it more. You guys have showed your your interest and expressed interest in seeing it built more. So that's exactly what we're doing. Tires and rims out of the way. Secondary clutch out of the way. So hopefully this thing is going to perform a little better. Um, the secondary, it's not like it was absolutely needed, but what I was finding is under hard load and after extensive use, I was building heat in the clutch and I could hear a little chirp. So I just didn't want that weight on the back of my mind, worried about the bike burning up belts when she's in the thick crap. And obviously, after all the recommendations and a lot of guys pairing up the QSC with the STM, well, that's a setup we haven't tried yet, and I love trying shit that I that I haven't tried, right? And see what I think, and then uh, regurgitate what uh, what changes and what we feel about the products back to you guys. So, yeah, man, it's just awesome, really. Um, some add-ons on her already, boys, for the 2020. We just stabbed in the RJWC neutrinos because I love those. They look pretty killer. Very clean look on the bike. Um, the 2020 has now got a new set of tires on her. Um, a lot of billet, little, little billet thing add ons. And all. We got the new RJ shifter. We sealed up the gas cap with a good o ring. We did the same thing to the air box. Uh, just added the Seco steering stem uh, brace, which is a uh, must have in my opinion, with the Rocks riser so the bike just feels better. Um, I haven't got a lot of seat time on it since I've done some of this stuff. But uh, I do plan on going out to the track and doing some work tomorrow, so maybe uh, maybe we'll haul it out there, test it out. Although I think I'm leaning towards taking the 18 and seeing what uh, what the new clutch combination is going to do. So I think it pretty much covers all the changes, boys, that I can think of, anyways. Um, so yeah, there's been some changes, big changes in my opinion. And once you jump on one and start ripping it around aggressively, I think you'll agree with me and find. Uh, find that the suspension changes alone have changed the characteristics of the Renegade. Um, not the front, but it's, it's crazy. So. Reflash coming for this one. Uh, I still wanted to reflash that one, but it's a little more of a difficult process because you got to kind of got to go in and unplug the uh, the ECU and all that jazz. Well, this one's got a port where you just plug into it and go, so it makes it a lot easier. We are actually contemplating uh, adding a shot of NOS. A lot of you guys have uh, commented that that's what you'd like to see. I've been talking to Jeff Palm Racing and uh, it's possible we might go with one of his kits. We'll see. Still uh, still thinking on it. I don't want to get far into the engine work, boys, because everybody I know that has, they end up with very expensive repairs and long down times. And it's not, that, it's not that it's guaranteed to happen, but the odds increase dramatically. These things are done right. You know, uh, it's just so much horsepower and you're pushing so much that, you know, like a gasket moves cool your engine and uh, there goes thousands right and uh, we're still not rich so it's not the road we're going to take yet but throwing a shot of NOS at it sounds like fun to me uh, I've been watching NOS to do it for years and uh, I think I'd love to try it and see what she's like in this game yeah but I want to get that out of the way because I got a lot of guys going why would you even bother it's just a color change difference well you couldn't be further from the truth boys can ams made a lot of improvements on this bike um, and some changes that we haven't quite decided whether they're better or worse yet. It'll take some more running. Um, I do think the throttle control is taking some getting used to from riding this for a couple years. The more I ride it, the more I'm starting to like it. And uh, like I said, just reaching up, throwing it into normal, takes out a lot of that uh, lurch and feel. So that's it, boys. These are the beauties. 
So for those of you guys who don't know what's going on, we've got the two demos. We've got the XRC from Bay Marine, and we've got the 2020 unit that they've thrown at us for the channel for content for this season. They let me build them. I'm allowed to throw whatever the hell I want on them. And when we're done with them at the end of the season, I do believe they're going to get raffled off and you guys are going to have a chance to win them. So right on. Very cool. I'm excited. We're actually going to raffle the uh, Maverick off here in a few days. We've got less than two weeks to the event. Uh, Bay Marines full throttle uh, race day at uh, the Shannonville Bayside Trailblazers racetrack. So if you guys want to come down and enjoy the event or join the event, participate in the races or just spectate and have a blast watching us be stupid then i uh, encourage it fully i'd love to see you guys there yeah, it'd be awesome to meet uh, i always love meeting viewers and uh yeah man i'm looking forward to competing i'm looking forward to hanging out should be a good time all right cheers we'll talk to you guys later atv signing out right on brother So that's impressive, man. Those are 34s on there, and she wants to lift at a pace. So I don't know if it's just our squared edge Moto Havocs brand new fresh rubbers, but I don't know. She's hooking, boys. I'm pretty happy with that. And the XM310s on the uh, 2020, I knew they'd hook. They just hook, and they hook so good. So that thing's going to be popping up everywhere now instead of spinning out behind me. And the cryptids were horrible for that on grass and stuff. They just they don't hook. Not like the XM310. So. Pretty excited about that. I hope you guys enjoyed this little, uh, I don't know, comparison video, I guess. We did a little comparisons there. I I'm sure I've probably forgotten a change or two, but it's what it is, boys. And you know, if I remember something on the trail that I forgot to mention, I'll do so. And uh, 
yeah so thanks again to every one of you guys for supporting us and uh it's been an exciting ride and i'm very stoked to have you with us so it's only gonna get better i'm sure of it man and i'll continue to work hard to uh to give you guys content you'll enjoy right so cheers till next time have a good one